Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Risking It All. We're, today we've got our usual hosts, we've got Brian and Barry from Jolly Media Marketing and myself Andy from McDade's Coaches. And today we're very lucky to be joined by the owner and founder of Workwear and PP Supplies, Paul Tallett. So Paul, I think you watch a wee bit of his show so you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah sort of general setup so if you can take us back to your early beginnings and tell us about your childhood and your education mate yeah thanks for having me on guys I appreciate it cheers Big for coming the show so it's been <laughs> pleasure to be on so, we yeah, finally yeah. found one then <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah I grew up in Cumbernauld um, sort of average childhood I think a lot of the guys that have been on already have said the same thing it's just yeah. football and everything else you don't know anything diff- any different because yeah. back then we never had social media to see what was going on and Everyone was working class, wouldn't they? Or certainly my the mm-hmm. peer group, we never knew any different. So, yeah, just football and kicking about and enjoying ourselves. And Brothers, sisters? Fun. Two sisters, uh, 18 months younger. I'm the oldest of three. Right, okay. Um, six years younger as mother one. So, uh, both doing well. I mean, we've all been sort of good careers. Mum and dad, my, my dad was a, a joiner, um, just grafted all the uh, time. Never mm-hmm. really, now, just worked. Mm-hmm. So that's all I knew. And that's probably where I get my work ethic from. Mm-hmm. Having seen him just working all the time. And my mum was a housewife if you want to call it that I don't know if you can say that these days <laughs> yeah. homemaker or whatever it is these days stay at home mum but she was I mean she put proper time into us I know we get friends and it's the, the mums and the phones all the time and you, you know, take them to the soft play and they just sit wherever else my mum was on his non-stop like literally you, know, you, you never get away with nothing basically and it, it was a good mm-hmm. upbringing now in that respect we never had money we never had much with time and with family time and we are always away at the weekends and stuff like that my dad was never like a pub guy or anything like that he would just work family time work family time all the time and it was good I, I, I was saying to Andy recently like, I don't really think back now I'm one of the guys that just thinks forward all the time but coming on here I've had a wee bit of time to reflect on things and I remember like, a childhood memory of my mum sort of saying hey, or I'd say my mum sorry I'm going to play football with my mates now the way you, you spoke because you were gallus and cool mm-hmm. and whatever else and, and she'd say you're, you're, you're what and I'm saying I'm going to play football with my mates and she's going you sit on that couch and tell me what you're going to do and of course then the penny drops you're going well, I'm going to play football with my friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she said, if you want to get a good job and you want to get out of this life you're living now, this, this sort of scheme, if you like, you, know, mm-hmm. you can't speak like that. And you're going, all right, okay. Now. It really is. Now. 40 years later, I still speak like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was aye. it. Aye. So it was, it was good times. Aye. Good, good childhood. And what about school life for you? How were you academically? I was okay. I, I mean, I know most guys may have on here and most business guys, oh, we're rubbish at school. We hated it and all that sort of stuff. I, I was okay. I, I was sort of above average you know, wasn't he? Aye. one of the, the swats one of the, the dunderheads sort of thing I was just a wee bit of above average sort of what thing. school did you go to? Uh, a ladies high a ladies high so this is before that then a ladies high it was good again it was just it's what you knew wasn't it there was nothing else to it it was just school get your head down and I think I had a conversation with my friend the other day actually we were out in the hills and his wee boy's 13 and he's going into fourth year and you know, now select your your, your um, subjects subjects aye we're having a conversation I think it's on the else I think the podcast like how do you know what you want to be at 13? Like, you're just young, aren't you? And daft and kicking about and playing football. And what, do you, what do you want to be when you're 13? You, you don't know, don't you? Know? And, I mean, in my case, it was just work away. And I, I think I, I was quite into writing when I was young, with football reports and stuff like that. And oh, yeah, right. Okay. So I got sort of pushed down that route, maybe because it was the only thing I knew, or the only thing I was good at. And mm-hmm. Probably the reality is, you know, these years later, work was the only thing I'm good at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It, it, it went down that route. So I, I, I was in English, that was my thing. And I was pretty much rubbish at everything else. And, and uh, I went down that route and just worked hard. I'd done my prelims, remember prelims, and aye, uh, aye. completely flunked them. And again, I think I've heard other people saying it like the education system. For me, it's all about memorising, isn't it? Unless you can uh-huh. memorise, there's no really room for artistic side of it or, or whatever else you can show. Just memorise that. And if you can memorise, you went about to see Ben Fogel there, like, you know, the Kyle Fatale, and he aye. was saying the same, and it's true. And if you can memorise, you'll be a good uh, academic, but if you, you can't, aye, it doesn't give you any. Expansive knowledge of the world run about you or no. anything, it's just you memorise a set parameter on some subject mm-hmm. and regurgitate it. And we never travelled as well back to childhood. So I mean, it was Scarborough and maybe Blackpool if you're lucky, we never had the money to go Aye. abroad and stuff. And now you can't have a rose mm-hmm. oyster and you can go anywhere and see anything, sort of thing. But but for us, no, we never had that. And, but I sort of flunked the prelims, made a complete backside dream and thought, oh, I better get my finger out here now. So get the head down. And as I say, English was a big thing, but my English teacher. I know name him, but him and I were just button heads all the time now. Just and probably the reality was I was a dick. Let's be honest. You don't see it back then, but you think back now as an adult. So, but it, it wasn't the best, maybe teacher for me. So I get papped at the class. 
So he's like, fucking name him, man. So uh, yeah, I get pipped at the class and I get put in the, again. I don't know if you'd like credit foundation. Yeah, I, I know he's a wee oh, bit, we had foundation. Wee bit younger yeah. than me. <laughs> 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 so I was what three, I think. If there was eight levels, I was three. So like above average, as I said. That's good. Right, uh, good. So anyway, I get pipped at the class. So I get put into one, which would be rather really, Clever guys were throwing mm-hmm. that word. So um, I would sit there and I'd say, right, I am, I now, on my lines, I, I'm not a wee idiot. <laughs> <Stuck Yeah. enough. laughs> so I sat in there for basically half the year because this guy, Marlon, didn't walk in his class. Right. But of course, I'm watching all these guys who are the one, they were all intelligent mm. guys, weren't they? But the teacher was teaching them. That was the mm. difference. So I'm Aye. sitting there going, no wonder I'm not learning this guy. It's just a cycle, you know. That, whereas their teacher was good. So of course, I'm sitting there, I'm picking up on this and I'm realising, right, if I went on in life, I need to sort of screw them up and start doing what these guys are doing, sort of thing. So, um, I got the head together, done okay in my exams. When, and again, back to my friend, Mr. Mallon, when you were going into f- uh, two year hires in fifth year, he never put me forward for English. So he said, No, you're not going to get your English, you're going to flunk it. So you're not going to get to do uh, your higher English. Of course, I wanted to be a journalist, that was all mm-hmm. I knew. So without my higher English, I wasn't going to be, be a journalist. So I was raging mad at this, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. I get my hires, I get my standard grades, everything's good, and then I go on to do my hires and everything else. And, aye, so that was it. So basically, finished school, fifth year, get three hires, I was going to go to unit by a journalist, that was my logical step. Um, finished up, it was May, June, you finished school, so yeah. mm-hmm. uni was starting in September. Um, looking forward to it. Summer, here we go, party time now. I was in LA, I never had a summer job or anything like that. I never had, oh, sorry, I never had a weekend job, paper round, or uh, McDonald's or anything like that. All my mates, I used to go to football all the time. So, I couldn't do a weekend job. So I'd buy and sell computer games and you know, be Nintendo for a five or so. Oh, yeah, right, okay, yeah. And again, you think that, you don't <coughs> think that you're an entrepreneur. The reality was that, that was probably the first steps of Aye. doing that sort uh-huh. of stuff. So um, I had enough money to get me through the week at the bottle of Bucky on a Friday night or whatever mm-hmm. else and bottle of Mary down. And, but, so that was my <laughs> plan for the summer. I'm just um, going to sit and play football with my mates and have a good time, that sort of thing. And then my mum decided otherwise. She said, no, you're going to get a job. You're not sitting here for you. May, June to September sort of thing and mm-hmm. so then you've got into the big bad world of yeah. work haven't you what, what, was your, what was your entry into working life what was your first, first job first of all uh, again back in the day you never did internet so you were getting the evening times or the herald and cutting out the wee papers the wee, the wee snippets oh, and applying for them applying for a hundred jobs and then all of a sudden you got all these interviews you're going what, what job is it I don't know uh, <laughs> yeah. it. again learning about now file and that sort of stuff and so the first first major one the first one I got offered was a Scottish Power no user call centre boys and mm-hmm. again you never had call centres back then it was probably called something different but um, went to the interview I was just turned 16 and uh, it was, I remember vividly it was £110 a week which was a king's ransom back then uh, yeah. all my mates were in like, skill seekers or YTSs mm-hmm. and 40 quid a week and um, I go in I go do the interview and get my dad's now Bart Simpson mm-hmm. tie on that kind of <laughs> stow in um, come the end of it I think I don't know right there and I go home mum says how's you going I, says, I think I'm going to get this job and then the phone goes and right, mum says that's it uh, Scottish Power on the phone and he says right you've done really well I'm going to offer you the job and I'm like well, fantastic eh? but because you're age you're only about £86 a week oh, said, but the job was £110 a week and he said ah but you're only 16 now the rest of the candidates were older than you and more experienced I says well why are you not giving them the job then mm-hmm. and again this is something I've always had throughout my whole career <laughs> know your worth know your worth, know your worth. and mm-hmm. it's not a case of being cocky or arrogant mm-hmm. it's a case of being confident in your ability and your how you can conduct yeah. yourself so I said, well, if I'm good enough, I'm old enough, so I want £110 a week. And this woman's like, gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 what are you doing at 16? These bucks are sitting down telling us. <laughs> and I says, well, if you know people to get me £110 a week, I don't want the job. And she's like, but there's so many hundred people apply for this. I don't care. £110 a week, I don't want it. She's like, well, we can't give you £110 a week. So that's fine. Hung the phone up. Walk back through the living room. Mum no. says, "How's you going?" I never get the job. Yeah. And she's going, but in my mind, I'm still thinking I've got to somebody to drink Bucky and, and get it down. <laughs> so anyway, I got another opportunity. It was a company. I, I should have said I was doing the internships for the journalism. But it was like, no, a week at a time, yeah. two weeks mm-hmm. at a time. Uh, you'd go to the local paper and you would they would give you like, articles to write. And again, pre-internet, you'd press a wee button that said "Send to Editor," which in reality was probably the internet back then or an mm-hmm. email. Mm-hmm. And then, but you were writing all these articles, and then you'd see it in the paper the next week. Oh, I can't wait to see my article now. Your name and lights, but oh written by Joe Bloggs I said mm-hmm. I wrote that he yeah, was taking the credit yeah, obviously uh, right, okay. so you'd go and do that for two weeks you wouldn't get any money and at the end of it you got a Parker pen so mm. I was doing this and all the, the sort of papers stuff that me had Parker pens and WH <laughs> <laughs> and I still never had any money and I'm going yeah. this isn't what I want to do I, I want to get some money behind me now so I got a chance to work for a company called Amy Russell um, in Glasgow High Park Street just along at the, the Hydro and sort of walked in for an interview and I 
wee bit nervous and whatever else. But the instant I felt it was the right place, I just had a good buzz about the place and um, got offered a job. It was a, a simple job. I took it right away, £110 a week. I actually got my money. <laughs> and um, <laughs> was, all I did was book in stock and uh, deal with returns. Simple as that. I mean, it was a doddle. So I go in, first few weeks, working away, whatever else. And I'm going, I'm finished my work for 12 o'clock in the day, right? And I'm, you know, the guys, it was all young guys like me, maybe five, six year older. They were all sort of going, just chill out then, like, relax, because they were all doing the same. And I'm going, I'm not here to relax. Like, I, I just, oh, I knew it was what my dad done, just graft, graft, yeah. graft. And that was my key to success. But bear in mind, I'm only there for the summer, I'm not there much longer than that. So I said to one of the directors, like, I'm sort of lost by 12 o'clock. Is there anything else I can be doing? He's like, do you, do you like reading? And I'm going, well, obviously it doesn't know I'm going to be a journalist, but I'm, I'm saying, oh, yeah, I've read a few books. He's like, well, read it, it'll broaden your horizons. A guy called Alan Summer, we'll never forget, he died a couple of years ago, met up me all through my career, and I'm going, you won't, you're going to pay me to sit and read a book, God? Mm. He's like, that'll be good for you, not? and I'm going, all right, okay, but then you'd read a book and you've got nothing else to do. So what I used to do, I used to go to the warehouse, um, and there was a the guys there, and I gave me to be affiliation with the football, we knew each other and whatever else, and they'd say, I'd help them load the vans, because they were always struggling. And I just grafted and lifted stuff, and I knew the products because I was going at the back with the returns, so I knew the difference between a sledgehammer and a claw hammer and all that sort of stuff. But again, you learned quickly because the warehouse was massive, so they would say, "Go and get me ten PG nine nine six batteries," and you'd come back with the wrong battery, and they'd go, "That's the wrong one." You go, Fuck. "I need to run all the way back up to the far end of the warehouse." So you learned quite quickly mm -hmm. what to do. So I'd done that for a couple of months, um, and then of course they realised maybe something I never realised that maybe I had a wee bit of something, and so they promoted me to internal sales on the phone. Uh, that happened within, I don't know, about a month or something like that. And wages went up again, and all of a sudden, another 50 quid a week. And I'm going, and I start thinking, do I want to be a journalist here? Because I'm earning serious money here mm. yeah. compared to all my mates. And um, I was doing that, but the downside of that is there was about, I think, six people in internal sales. So everyone that phoned wanted to speak to them. They didn't want to speak to me because yeah, they never right. knew me. So I became a glorified receptionist. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting there going, this is murder, little day. Can I speak to Jackie? Speak to Alan? Speak to Alan? Speak can then they speak to me? I'll take your order. No, no, do I speak to you? Okay. So there was three guys in the counter. So we sat in a sort of window behind the counter and these three guys would basically, there would be a queue at the door. The place was heaving and everyone would come in and get their contractor's tools and whatever else. And um, I'd be sitting there you now just watching this unfold. So they would queue for about an hour, get served. The guys would put a delivery note on the, the counter, press a bell. The guys would come through for the warehouse, make out the order. So the queue went from there to there and nobody was getting served. And this queue was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But meanwhile, I'm sitting there with nothing to do. So I had the experience of the warehouse to go, I'm going to go out and help these guys. So I basically out started making up orders and, and giving them to all the customers and you know, bringing the queue down a wee bit. And one well, of the guys in my office are saying, what the hell are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. this isn't your job and I'm going, but nothing else to do. So mm -hmm. again, that gets recognised. And I said to my yeah. staff, look, don't think it doesn't get recognised. If you're working hard, people would recognise it. If you want to come in and do the bare minimum, by all means, you earn oh. the bare minimum, but... From my mind, it was all just graft and push and push and push, push all the time. And effectively, that's what I've done. I know it was that makes sense. Just, and that's yeah. that's some really interesting advice for your man there about just read a book. You know, there's not many folk that would, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> take take that uh, sort of growth mindset and go and look, go and develop yourself on my money. Definitely, aye, which mm -hmm. is really good. And that for there, it sort of developed. That, that's what went to my workwear. So they got me into workwear. They had a workwear company as well within it, or a workwear section, which was next door. So. I need to be careful what I'm saying because there was a bit of dodginess going on at the time but they said to me look there's two guys running it we're not happy about how they're running it that's all I had to really say about it mm -hmm. <laughs> go to jail or go to mm -hmm. get sued <laughs> so um, you go through there and sort it out now I'm 16 years age bear in mind right and I'm going mm -hmm. I don't even know what that means right so I go through and um, again a bit different to how it works these days but you never email and everything so guys would come in with an order book and they would write and I want 10 pair of boots right then you would send the company the invoice and they'd phone back and say, I need a, a, a copy, the copy of the order and a copy of the POD. So our guys had never filed orders for two years. So I basically went in this office and just spent a month filing all these orders and getting them all sorted. So again, people recognise this guy's come in and solved a major, major problem for us. So I was doing that for a long, long time and uh, got up to speed. It was a bit of jiggery-pokery growing me. Then I count my Adidas of all places back then, Heli Hansen. So they'd done a stock check and I think there was 159 items on stock. There was only 20 items there. <laughs> ah, right, OK. <laughs> so I think you see where this is going. <laughs> so all of a sudden, they pull in every single member of staff in this worker section, which, of which there was 12 of us. So I get pulled in. They said, um, yeah, we're giving you a written warning because of this stock we're missing. And I said, but I never stole the stock. So I go home to my dad. My dad says, no, he's an old trade union guy. Absolutely not. You sign that. You, 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 mm -hmm. you think you're a thief or you're admitting you're a thief. So I go back and bear in mind, I'm going to uni, so I don't care. Sack me if you want. I'm going to uni. So I went back in the next day, so I'm not signing it. And one of the bosses pulled in and says, Paul, listen, just take one for the team. Now, we know it's not you, we know mm -hmm. who it is. I 
I said, well, if you know who it is, get rid of him. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to get the right information to get rid of him. I said, well, I'm not taking one for the team because I'm not a thief. So anyway, I was the only one at the 12th that never took the, the written warning. And uh, two weeks later, two guys get sacked. Everyone's good. But they never wiped the records of the guys that took the written warnings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's no good. So anyway, all of a sudden, I get appointed manager of the Workwear Centre. But now I'm sort of 16. I'm going, what the hell? I've got 12 staff here, 11 staff. Mm -hmm. And I've got to try and manage. I didn't know what managing was. I never did training or anything else. <laughs> so he said, bring through anyone you want to assist you and they'll help you out. So I brought through this guy, Jerry. And, and everything's good. So at this point, I'm sort of saying, well, I don't want to go to uni. I'm earning good coin. And they said, look, next time I dep, they did about, I think, seven or eight depots. Next time as a depots manager, manager's job comes up, you're getting that. And I was like, well, I'm only a winner here now. I'm earning good coin and everything else. And so time evolves and I've sort of semi run. I've not been given the position, but you're, you're running it. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. I think we're maybe a bit, I don't know, it's maybe six months down the road, come up to my 18th birthday. All the guys I want to take me out for a night out, you know, party and whatever else. That's the priority in your life at that point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So they said to me, you need to work Saturday. Because they never cover us up. And I said, I'm not on Saturday, I'm going to out. It's my birthday. Like Most important thing in the world, and I was going to football the next day. So he said, if you don't work Saturday, you won't get the manager's job. I said, but I'm doing the manager's job for six, seven months. So it just a gun to my head. And again, mm. that knowing your worth, and maybe this isn't the best example, don't go to a party instead of taking the, the job. But, yeah. but I just went, no, do you know what? If you're going to have a gun to my head, I don't want the job in, just, just yeah. keep it. So I went back through to the internal sales, sitting behind being the glorified receptionist again. Yeah, they brought okay. two guys in to replace me. The guys made a complete <coughs> arse it. And then six months later, they said, do you want to go back through and sort that out with me? And I thought, well, sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> the chance for me to do it. They yeah, paid yeah. two guys. So they paid another two guys, they made an arse it as well. And it just sort of, the relations are a wee bit soured at that point. And then that took me on to the next stage of my career sort of thing. And, yeah. so. Can I ask a question just before we move on? That next stage of your career, like I think most people at 16 when they enter the workforce, or they have a bit of a sheep mindset because you don't know what you don't know and you know it's like do that right cool I'll do that because the boss is telling me to do that I would suggest the majority of people will, will land in that box doesn't it sound like that's the way that you were made up like from the off no I know my worth you're paying me that and I'm not doing it or you know no I'm sticking to my plan on a Saturday would you think instilled some it was there a bit of rebellion there possibly or? I, I think although my dad was a grafter but he was a Labour guy went to, not now obviously, but back then, you know, that, that mentality, you know, working class, you know, you, you've got to sort of fight for your worth and whatever else, and I suppose it's just knowing your worth, isn't it? It's just confidence, it's no arrogance, it can be perceived as arrogance, but I think it's confidence, isn't it? Just make sure you can get in and work hard, and, and I think back then there was a, a gluttony of jobs, maybe less so these days, I mean, if you lost your job a day, you'd be going, what am I going to do, because mm. there's not as much jobs out there, or good jobs anyway, and Back then you could have walked out a job on Friday and walked out a new one on the Monday sort of thing. So maybe it was that as well. I don't know. But certainly confidence. I think confidence in my ability. Not definitely not arrogance, because right. never came across like that. I hope I don't come across like the day. But, mm. but back then it was just confidence, I believe. I, right, good. Certainly, uh, All right. Well what, what was next then? So the, Keep going. that company, uh, as I say, Russell's <coughs> the relations were a bit served by this point. So two guys from Russell's were leaving to not set up their own company, they were going back to put a sky down south, but they were leaving to set up basically and they said, Look, two directors. Yeah, sorry, two managers. Do you want to come work for us? You know, at this point, I'm sort of thinking, oh, we've, we've sort of kissed and made up, and mm -hmm. I'm still on for the next manager's job at this point, so I'm just biding my time for somebody to pop their clogs or get sacked or whatever. So I'm waiting patiently, and I'm going, right, okay, maybe I'm 18 now, and I'm still young, obviously, mm -hmm. ahead of my peers, I'm, but then I'm feeling a bit stagnated with where my career was going. So they're saying, look, come work with us, and I'm saying, well, what am I doing? Are you going to be doing everything? Like, heat sale, embroidery stores, orders, sales, the whole shebang. And I'm going, but I've got people to do that for me. Why do I want to come and do that myself? Mm -hmm. I don't know who said it to me, but they said, look, how are you ever going to run your business one day? You don't know how business works for the bottom up. All you know is how to tell people what to do. And I was like, that's a good point, actually. If I go there, and at least I know now how to do everything, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So I took a wee bit of wing and prayer. And I wasn't getting particularly more money or anything like that, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me. And, um, so it was fine, yeah. I said, right, but let's go and we'll do it. And um, so they took it up and handed the notice in. Monday morning, um, right, that, that's us, we're good to go, we've been kicked out the door, you got up next. So I got up next and I think it was three or four directors and there was Mr Russell himself, he, 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 never the first name, Mr Russell, mm -hmm. and he chapped the door, walked in and um, he said, come, one of the ones, you're like, oh, shake me up, <laughs> <laughs> the door. so I walk in, he says, um, what can I do for you, son, or, 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 probably don't even know my name, I said, I'll oh, just let you know, I'm, I'm leaving, he's like, what do you mean? There's maybe a letter of resignation, I'm <laughs> trembling, <laughs> and he says, um, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go and work with John and John, the two guys, I mentioned. And he said, oh, yeah, no. I said, I am. And he's like, go to my office. 
So I go the way back downstairs and I'm in the office every day saying, how'd you go in then? I says, I don't know, I've still got my letter. <laughs> <laughs> did you resign? I says, I think I did. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> so that was fine. So I wait the next day, got up, chat with those, same routine, come, walk through. Mr. Russell's had them, told you yesterday, go away. So I got the way downstairs. So these guys are then phoning me going, well, how are you coming? Are you not coming? Because mm-hmm. they think they're obviously going to throw everything at me to make me stay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, well, I don't know, I've handed my notice and I'll just walk out. I says, I can, I've got a month's notice and I've got this. You've got to be professional. You never know how things are going to turn. Day three, same routine. He's like, Paul, I'm telling you, you're not resigning, go away. I don't know how many days we got to, but anyway, I get pulled in by one of the directors. Listen, you're not going anywhere. You're on a promise. Because I'm still going on about what happened to this sad to work a Saturday. And mm-hmm. and so they're like, look, it's fine. Would you want to stay? I says, I really don't want to stay. I just want to go. And, and then, of course, you start thinking, maybe I should have stayed and whatever else. But mm-hmm. I had a plan. I wanted to learn and whatever else. And um, next week, another director gets me. I says, like, maybe like seven or eight days into this, I'm still not allowed to design. Mm-hmm. And then finally, the sales director got me. At the time, I didn't drive. And I thought, the only way, I, if I said I wanted to be a salesman, but I didn't drive, they can't make me a salesman. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say they were making me a salesman. That's a great idea in my head, right? <laughs> so the sales director pulls me in, right, Paul, what's it going to take for you? He wants to stay. I said, I don't want to stay. I'm going to be a salesman at this company. I get my car, I get me this, I get me that. He's like, We don't drive. I'm like, I know, but they're going to put within my drive. It was all just fabricated, none of it was happening. <laughs> so he says, Right, I'm going to go and speak to Mr. Russell. I'll see you tomorrow. So, the same routine. He says, Great news for you. You're going to be a salesman with us. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He says, um, Rob, this guy Robert's going to take you about. So he'll train you to get your license. He says, But if it takes longer, there's a wee guy called Malky who's a handyman. He'll just drive you about. He'll be your driver. <laughs> 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 so I've got nowhere to go, have I? I'm yeah, sitting there going, yeah, yeah. I've made a complete back. He says, listen, okay, let me think about it. Of course, then I go back. I'm like, mm-hmm. What have I done here? So I say, listen, I've made a back side of this. I don't want to be a salesman. I've just lied to try and get it. So after much to and fro, and they let me go, basically. Right. And then when I go to the next job, and aye, that was good experience. <laughs> but, mm. <laughs> aye, that's, that's probably the longest uh, accepted resignation I've ever heard. Ten but, days or so. <laughs> uh, but see, see, at that point, see that first initial conversation with the two guys that were leaving? Yeah. Where they said, no, well, you don't know anything about the ins and outs of business. Was that the very first time you actually thought about maybe one day I'm going to run my own business? I, th- I think in reflection, yes, but I don't think they thought, cross my, not consciously, crossed my mind at the time. But yeah, in reality, it was I, 100%. Now, I didn't know that. I didn't know anyone had businesses now. Mm-hmm. I know your dad obviously did and whatever else, mm-hmm. but I was, all my pals, mums and dads were taxi drivers or worked in factories. You never had people with businesses where I came from. And I remember a lot of financial advisor who I still used to this day actually his son took over the business but he used to come and see us and they'd a sports car we'd all be running out chasing the car and we'd never seen anything like that we were all running about cartinas and mm-hmm. ladders and skoders and that <laughs> it was back in the day we'd just never seen that but no in reality to answer your question yeah I suppose it was that was a penny drop yeah definitely so, so you go to this new business this new venture that set up with the two guys you're, you're then at the coal face of it, do, doing the do, as it were yeah. is that really where you learned the trade around work and, and, and PPU and you just there's only one way to learn isn't it on the job and from my perspective and it, it can be quite complex now with certain things but you just learned you were doing everything every single thing of business it, it was brilliant honestly I, I thoroughly enjoyed it at the start and it, so the guy who owned it was an English guy multi-millionaire I mean he had a, a house with 46 bedrooms in it and mm-hmm. two lakes in the grounds and it took us down and, and you get a wee taste of that life and you think uh, you had like a, a nightclub in his house with like 16 God. urinals if they kept going on about the, the carp in the lake and the you know, the, the fence going in the, the two mile drive in I couldn't believe he had 16 urinals in his house. I'm like, I'm there, what, what is this but, uh, so he owned it um, but we were left to run it ourselves complete autonomy so these two guys were basically running it and I was the, the other guy and we grew and we had more people involved and everything else and, and uh, so was that the same company I met you in. Yeah, that in Bell's Hill. Do you remember? It? Or was that no? No, no I had, I had only ever been down to Planter. Right, so that was the next one. That that's the, next this, one. the first company's called Workwear and Industrial Supplies, not to be confused with Workwear and PP. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we call it the first Workwear because that's how it played out, sort of thing. But yeah, so that went well, and it, we done it. it. There was a guy. Um, it's funny how life turns. It. I bought this guy's house. Would you believe he subsequently died? But I'm in the house that he lived for a number of years. There was this guy at the company in Cumbernauld. Um, and he was trying to poach us basically if he wanted a better word because he could see what we were doing this small business in Bells Hill um, and the guy the English guy had multiple businesses so we never really much involved with him we just got on with it so this guy in Cumberland I don't know name him but um, he said why don't you come work for us so there was this two two directors myself and a couple of other bodies at this point so one of them was really keen to go he liked the sort of glamour and the lifestyle and this guy in Cumberland had the fancy house the fancy motor the fancy watches all the, all the things Aye. that John wanted basically but as I was a bit, I could see it as a bit more, he was a bit of a 
Right, you're right, we'll take it through. It's going to be all that's where I... No, 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 So I could see this a mile off, right? I, I just, you know the tight one, that's smoothness and whatever yeah. else, and I'm saying, I don't want that, that's not for me. And so anyway, John was right into it, he says, look, you need to come with me, because John and I were quite close, and families, the wife's not, were close. He was 10 years older than me, 12 years older than me. And he said, um, right, I've got his, I've got his ideal. I'm like, all right, what's the deal? We're going to work for this guy. All right, aye, okay, well, that's what you're doing, what mm -hmm. am I doing? Oh, you're coming with me, and I'm going, all right, okay. So we met the guy, well, with him, I rights to meet him, and I spoke to him, and I'm like, nah, he's no for me, it's just, it's the bullshit, as I said, and, mm -hmm. and he said, right, I'm going to, I'm going to make you a director, right? I thought I was maybe 21 at the time, and I was like, well, I'm not about titles, I'm about money, so mm -hmm. you tell me, what, what are you going to give me? And okay, I can't remember the exact number, he was giving me four grand more a year than what I was on, and I said, that's great, and I come to the car, and I had a company car, and he said, oh no, you're not got a company car, I said, well, so you're asking me to work for less then, back to mm -hmm. what I'm saying, know your worth, mm -hmm. and he said, no, 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 you're, you, you know, you've got, Four grand more, and you're going to be a director. I said, So I can run about with less money until I've got a B card that says I'm a director on it. Mm -hmm. No chance. So this went on for a, a quite a bit of time. As I said, our John was desperate to go. The other John, two Johns, he spoke to them as well, and he's like, Nah, it's not for me. But he says, I know you'll go because I know your friend will be John. I says, Well, I, I don't ba base my business decisions and friendship, it's based on my worth and everything else. And so in between times, the guy from England, his name is Vic, um, phoned me up and he says, um, I need a serious word with you, and of course I'm going on. He said, well, you've been talking to this guy for company all this as well. I'm well with him. I rights to talk to anyone. I'm not mm -hmm. a director of the company. I'm not no, mm -hmm. contracted to you. I can talk to whoever I want. I says, and I'm, I says some options. I'm sure you have. You never became a multi-millionaire where you're 16 year old with everybody. <laughs> talk to people. And he says, oh, no, 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 I understand that. He says, so I've spoke to John, the other John. He says, and I've just told him to go. If he wants to go and talk to him, he can go. He was a director, so there's different rights as a director. Mm -hmm. as well. And I says, well, Okay, he says, so where does that leave me with you? I says, well, you tell me. If you want me to go, I'll go. If you don't, no, I don't want to go. And he says, well, I'll tell you what, um, I'll give you a six grand wage rise to stay, uh, a directorship, just, I think I just turned 22, and pick any car you want. I think it was up to about 10 grand, which back then was a bit of money as well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, stayed, aye, and away we went, like a train sort of thing, and John and the other John and I fell out, which was a wee bit a sad, but anyway, that's business, isn't it? You've got mm -hmm. to make your own way in life, and and on we went, so it was me, John, um, the English guy never really involved, got involved with, we brought in more staff and we sort of grew it. Then things went a wee bit pear-shaped further down the road, because the English guy had a, a lease on a big unit in Aberdeen uh, for 25 years, it was costing him a million quid a year, we mm. never had a business up there. So he wanted to open a business, a, a branch of us in Aberdeen, and use our name. So at this point he'd emigrated to Thailand and oh, he sold up all his businesses and he was mm. just sort of dodging away, so he, but he, still, he couldn't get out of this lease. So he brought in this guy for Aberdeen and told him he would be managing director of our company. Effectively my boss, right? Mm, right, so okay. Like, right, okay. But I didn't, never knew this, right? Because I was on holiday. So John, the guy I worked with, my fellow director, went to a meeting and was told this, but never told me. Because obviously I'd be going, hey, that'll be right. I'd be <laughs> shooting the <laughs> <one> <laughs> right. So this went on. So this guy, Steve, gets involved in um, the MD of the other company, the parent company. He'd came, Vic's still in uh, Thailand. And uh, they took us out for lunch, but took us in separate cars, right? Mm -hmm. going, you know where this is going to uh, yeah, So this yeah. guy Steve The guy from Aberdeen Says oh I hear you're the man That runs this company And I says well it's myself and John No it's not what Vic tells me mm -hmm. Divide and conquer And it was just trying to Split us up and I'm going Okay So uh, anyway He tells me right away I want rid of John Vic wants rid of John I'm going oh here we go again uh, <laughs> So I'm like right okay So through time That effectively happened It was horrible And it, it's one of my Sort of lowest moments In my, my career Because I was used as a ruse To get rid of John And it shouldn't have been like that It was, mm -hmm. it was completely wrong we, We'd sort of We'd explored setting up our own business at this point because, as I say, Vic was selling all his companies and assets, 54 companies, and his plan was to keep us. He never told us that. He just went to Thailand and sold all his businesses. So we could see the writing on the wall, so we went to explore about setting up our own business and stuff like that. So that was used as a ruse to get rid of John. Well, as a director, you couldn't have done this. And there was other things as well, but and I get caught out. He basically um, called me at a meeting. He phoned the office, says, where are you? So I'm in the office, he just phoned it. He says, um, meet me at the uh, Bells Hill Farm. So I was already okay. So I meet him at the Bells Hill Farm, and he says, um, yeah, I know you've been looking at setting up your own business. I says, well, again, I'm assessing my options. Yeah, so I'm going to give you three options. I'm going to shut down the branch. Uh, I'm going to sort of thing, uh, sack everyone. Sorry, sack you. Uh, or I'm going to, you want to help me get rid of John? And I'm going, oh, mm, God. God. <laughs> you get 30 seconds to make up your mind. And that was the lowest point in my life. I remember going away. I was going to be mini cruise thing in Norway. And I remember sitting in the back of the boat, just seeing the, the sort of rip <laughs> tide. Going, I can't believe this is happening. What have I done here? And it was a horrible, horrible situation. So I can never trust that guy. So anyway, John ends up leaving. This guy, Steve Aberdeen, was just a complete <laughs> nightmare. It was a different business up there. It was all about speed and how quickly you could get the stuff. It was all North Face and Bergos and all that sort of stuff. Whereas it was all high value, but low margin. Whereas mm -hmm. our business was sort of low value, 
high, pro, high, high margin sort of thing. So we had two different businesses and him and I were just button heads non-stop. This went on for a long, long, long time and it got to the point that it wasn't sustainable anymore and we just had to part company and yeah, that's the that ended basically. Uh, right. quite, quite a few really interesting dynamics and scenarios that you've encountered in that and obviously you mentioned you're quite young at this time aren't you you're 12 maybe tw- it's a couple of years down the road maybe 24 or something like this tw- 24 yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's mental so I don't, I've always been like man I had to take on a business dead young like I was sort of flung into it you know but yours is ridiculously <laughs> young <laughs> do I mean ridiculously young and we we folk actually fucking McKeevy and try to backstab each other. That's it's just tough times. It, but it's, it, it gives you a bit of resilience oh. and a bit of resolve mm-hmm. as well, doesn't it? You just sort of—I don't look back at it. This has been a bit of a journey for me just to think about these things, and you mm-hmm. just just keep going forward all the time. And it's yeah. just—I went mean, to show the other week, and the guy said, "I can't remember the, the exact expression, but basically, if you're looking back, you're not living the present. That's the the crux of it, and you've got to live in the present and the future, obviously. Uh, yeah. Plan, especially in business. Especially quite, in business. quite. I definitely agree with that. But thinking about you, those those different parts of that journey you were on right it sounds like you, you dealt with some really different personalities or like from management all the way up to ownership anything looking back in that that you've taken away from a positive trait of the managing you see and a negative trait what, what, what's your takeaways for dealing with these type Still of people? people on it you can i think the sales philosophy in it you're selling boxes it doesn't matter what you're selling right but it's all about people isn't it and if you treat people the same way and that's every aspect of your life I always think that way it doesn't, you, no matter how much money you've got or what you, car you drive or what you've in it it's all, it's all nothing isn't it it's how you treat people and as long as you treat people correctly and I've learned that with people I've had good managers I've had a lot of bad managers a lot of it but if you take the positives out of everything no one no, no one in the world is completely 100% bad so mm-hmm. if you can say that guy's got 100 traits and 99 are rubbish and one's good you take it don't you and learn and just same with knowledge, you read books, you just ninety nine percent it can be rubbish. I like all the self help stuff and got these guys that do all the talks and all I like all that sort of stuff and you take one percent out it, it's worth your while. So Aye. and then negative obviously. Yeah, you can play day, can you? <laughs> <laughs> but you just don't take that, you just ignore that and go right. Yeah. And I've got probably my bad points as well. I wasn't done as a perfect, but yeah, positives is people. Look after your people because you're only as good as your people. That's that's my theory. And it's taken me a long time to suss it out. Mm-hmm. I've been owning a business now, sort of thing, but yeah, definitely. And so was that the the next leap then, whenever you parted yeah. ways with that company? And did I, I know nothing about your business, to be fair. Obviously, you've got a relationship with Andy, but did you set your current business up with old John or any of the old Johns? No, or did you set it, it, it was up another yourself? step before we got to that. So I sort of, um, I let it be known I was interested in moving on now, as you do with people. Now, I spoke mm. to loads of people that just had to find the right fit and, um, there was a company, Scott Industrial, um, who I dealt with for a number of years, and I knew the owner Danny. He'd separated from his business partner, and he was sort of looking for someone. And I was sort of, and I was twenty, I was twenty five actually at this point, and I'd never really had a sort of pressure free job, if you like. And I'm going, I'm twenty five. All my mates are now not necessarily catching up with me, but they're all getting to the level where they're comfortable and mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, I've not really had that. I've just been busting my guts for the last nine, ten years and stressed out my box. I could go just a wee sales job now. Get, 30 grand a year, a nice company car, the <coughs> expensive account. I was like, ah, I'm going to be looking for that now and whatever else. So I spoke to loads of folk and loads of offers and I was like, none of them are just quite right for me. And, and then I spoke to guy Danny and he said, um, listen, I'll give you the money, I'll give you the car, I'll give you everything you want. And I want you to be sales director. He said, oh, I don't know why I'd be a director. And he's like, well, you can't come in at that level in my business and organisation without being a director. And I'm going, right, okay, well, I'll take it now and whatever else. And so we were negotiating the package and I'm sitting going, I'm going to go low here. I'm going to go 20 grand a month, right? Just to see how he bites. And he's going, ah, 20 grand a month. You're getting that whole poker mm-hmm. face. Going, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, Paul, you'll never do 20 grand a month. And I'm going, all right, okay. You'll do 10. So let's call it 12 and a half and I'll give you the same money. And I'm going, 20? I'm thinking 40. I'm just saying 20. Like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so anyway, we agreed on that. And then my first day, I basically got an order for 12 and a half grand. And I'm going, well, happy days. Happy days. days. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we said something like, give it three months and just get me a rental car and see if it works. And it did mm-hmm. work and it went really well. And, um, when I was leaving the last company, the guy Vic I told you about in Thailand, um, the guy Steve from Aberdeen had sort of phoned me and said, hey, I know you're leaving, meet me at the, the Hilton tomorrow morning. I'm like, ah, okay. He said, I've told Vic you're leaving and he wants you, He doesn't care, he's wanting you to leave. I said, that's good, I'm not trying to use this as a ruse to get more money. And ah, you've done it before and I'm going, that's okay, <laughs> I'm definitely leaving. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, I left it, next minute Vic's on the phone for Thailand, but it was really bad line and back then he's going, so he's emailed me, Paul, what's going on, why are you leaving? I'm like, Steve's already said he's told you this. And, He's like, no, he's not told me. He's like, um, what's it going to make for you? Still give you thirty percent of the business, sixty grand salary. And I'm sitting mm, going, God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's back to the Mister Russell had in your nose again. I'm going, oh, I don't believe it. But again, you've got to make up your mind, and you've got to say, right, 
you can be a man of your word as well, haven't you? Your, your reputation is everything. And there's, mm. a, there's a way of making quick bucks in life, but equally you've got to be strong your reputation everything else. So I'd committed to leaving it and I left. So the irony is, Vic then said, look, if you're leaving, I'm shutting down Aberdeen. I'm getting rid of Steve on the back of this. So he, he wanted basically shot him. Um, and I'm going to sell up the business. Do you want to buy the business? And I'm going, oh man, I'm not getting any money. Look, am I going to buy the business? He said, just you. So I said, look, I'll go and talk to Danny. So I said, would you be interested in buying the business with me? And he's like, um, well, aye. I said, but I don't have any money. He says, look, what I'll do, I said, I'd like to go 50 50. And he said, I'll give you, rather well, than going 50 50, we'll amalgamate the two businesses and I'll give you 25% of both businesses right, okay. as I win, which was Scott Industrial. I was like, that's a good deal for me. Aye. And mm -hmm. he says, um, I'll put up all the money now. And I'm like, right, okay, happy days. So, so that's what we've done. Aye. And so within three months, we'd, for me, having my easy life, my wee easy salesman job as a director owning 25% of the business. I'm yeah. like, oh my goodness. Um, but aye, that's, that kicked off for there and aye, on we went. And what, what was your decision process like with that? Because obviously that deal sounds amazing, right? Yeah. But this is another new personality coming into the fold, another entrepreneur, another business owner. Were you quite confident that, you know, you get a good feeling about that, Danny, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Was he... Did you just think it was right? Yeah, I knew him. I mean, I knew him for maybe nine, ten years before it, through right. business, obviously. Like, I would just mm -hmm. say, I didn't. Um, and he, he was a good guy. He was, he was quite a, I don't know, this guy, quite a large in life guy, now very gregarious and everything else. A good guy, and a, a, a connection with the football and everything else. So, no, I knew it'd be fine. I, it'd be, be good. And away we went. We went away like a train, actually. We just kept doing well. We had the two companies and we wanted to try and put them into the one premises. And at that point, my wife, Caroline, who's, again, she's coming into the back end of this, but she's a massive, she's partner in my business, the business we're in just now, and she started getting involved. So um, the company, Scott Industrial, was very antiquated with the systems. It was all handwritten, delivery notes, and I'd go and get big contracts with like, South Lanarkshire, and the guy before me saying, Paul, we've run out of boots, and we gave you an order for 100 pairs of boots. <laughs> so I'd phone the office, and the guy Ben would go, yeah, it's taking me forever to handwrite delivery notes. <laughs> 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 so you've got 100 pairs of boots there, the guy wants them, you've got them, you can't put them in a van because you can't handwrite them. So Caroline, my wife, comes, she, was, she worked in the scaffold, and she was very... Uh, high up and um, she was a PA to uh, board director at uh, Intersurf, big company in Glasgow. Right. And uh, she came in, she had all these great ideas, revolutionised the systems and everything else. And downside with that, Danny was very sort of chauvinistic and wasn't particularly keen on women who were strong and mm -hmm. well about herself. Uh, so uh, she was the flavour of it. That was always an issue for her and whatever else. But So she came in, so we, we basically put two businesses together and away we went. And we'd done that for maybe nine years, grew the business dramatically. And, on it went and we've done really, really well. We big contracts, North mm -hmm. Lanarkshire, South Lanarkshire, Malcolm's the uh, uh, haulage company. McDade's um, Coaches. McDade's Coaches. <laughs> and, uh, <Hudson. laughs> yeah, your local uh, <laughs> coach company. Don't school plug contracts. Him, man. Don't plug school contracts. I have already established that he sleeps in a bed of money, right? He doesn't need any money. <laughs> and how do how do they sort of contracts work? We work where in PP, or maybe even before I answer that, give us a rough overview of what we're in PPE what does that entail mm -hmm. so I mean our, our tagline we first set up sorry jumping forward to the new company that I've got now but it was head to toe protection we've got it covered so if you think hard hat goggles safety specs dust mask um, high vis vest polo shirt sweatshirt trousers waterproofs safety boots that's the quick way of probably seeing what we're selling sort of thing and with that comes the branding now heat seal yep. embroidery um, and that's what we do basically so and our business have evolved a wee bit more I'll tell you about that later on but um, but that was it basically you get in a company every user wearing it you wear mm. it every, everybody mm. wears what we are don't they in uniforms yeah. and, and PPE obviously personal pe protective equipment everyone needs that these days so yeah, yeah that's basically it. Brian, so, Brian normally slags me for this but I like to stick a logo in oh, the move so definitely. I, there's, definitely. Some, definitely. there's some custom God. coming your way I can bring, <laughs> bring my Wayne in the office right and see if you leave her unattended for 10 minutes she's got a JMM logo on it people, people logo anything that you leave in the office um, and rightly so so yeah I'll be giving you a shout after this thank you very much look forward to that look forward to that so see, you see that uh, going back to like, you amalgamated the two businesses into one you've got 25% of it you're winning big contracts how are you winning those big contracts are you like with the council is it relationship based yeah. is it tendering yeah 100% is it... I mean I've been doing this for 27 years now but even back then it was just you know, reputation and it's all, uh, back to what I was saying about your reputation how you conduct yourself and it's pretty simple we, we all know you can't get decent service anywhere now you go for your dinner it's terrible you phone up a call centre Mm -hmm. Terrible. <laughs> but, but you do, don't you? You phone your doctors, aye. you're 99th in the queue, you'll be oh, served aye. in the next two hours, and nobody's got time for that. So it's, it's very simple. Give us an order, and it's the last you'll hear about it. So you give me an order for what we're. You're not going to get a phone call saying, do you want to put a pink polka dot? You want to, we've mm -hmm. agreed on that. Just give me the workwear order, mm -hmm. and that'd be, do, that'd be do it. That's it. So you get to these guys, 
they tell you what they need, you give them a price and you just get the stuff to them. It's absolutely simple. Yeah, and that, that part you mentioned there, so like if you're a large council or any business for that matter and, and they become a client of yours, is the first stage of that to go, right, here's our brand guidelines of what we need to have on whatever we ask for and then you just order away? Is yeah, that how it works pretty much? They'll just, I mean, it's even simpler than that. I could just take a picture of your logo uh, just now, send it away, get it set up. We run it, we've got the embroidery machines in-house, the heat seal machines, um, and we just basically go for there. And it's as simple as that. We run a wee sample off, send it to you, you go, oh, it's great, go with that. And that's it. We just mm-hmm. put it in the code. It's really simple, but it's simple because <coughs> we've made it simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the very first sales call, um, way, way back in the first workwear company, as I call it, I met this guy, George Duff, and I'm friendly with something this day, and very intelligent guy, and I've been in sales his whole life, and really, really good guy. I take in all my wee sample bags and that now, thinking this is what you do. I've never been trained in my life, can't you see him? And he says, Paul, I'm going to give a wee lesson in sales. People are lazy. People don't want hassle. Make their life simple. And I was like, hmm. Be penny drops and whatever else. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? Well, it means you don't need to tell me that's a bottle green hoodie, code one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. Paul, get me the same hoodies you usually get me. You phone one of our competitors, market leader. Hi, I'm here. I'm Paul for what we're in PP Supplies. Um, who? Mm-hmm. What we're in PP Supplies? Account number, one, two, three, four. Right, can I order 20 to polo shirts? What polo shirts? Mm-hmm. The ones I usually get. What code, please? See the mm-hmm. you got. <sighs> See you later. You phone me up, Paul, going to give me 50 of my usual polo shirts, my usual logo. I don't need to send you a copy of the logo and everything. It just make it simple. I've never realised that that wasn't the way all what their companies worked. To be totally <laughs> on it, because it is all, like, we've always just that. I need a new guy's workwear, I need, this is these sizes, or we need 20 t-shirts, we need trousers, like, I just thought that was... No, it's murder. How, how, yeah. how, like, how, Barry's how, been trying to sort hats for this podcast, yeah. we know how to come to now, definitely. so we'll have a chat uh, after that. So definitely <laughs> see the hassle, how many have they come back to us with, like three or I four said, that, it's like, what about that? No, that's not what we want, that's not what we asked for. Or, so it's like we're saying, we want branded beanie hats, right, couldn't it be simpler? Yeah. So it was like, no, it wasn't a beanie, it's sorry, bobble it's, hats. it's bobble, bobble hats, we want branded yeah. bobble hats, or we don't have them, what about beanies? We don't want beanies, we want bobble hats because he's obsessed with bobble hats. <laughs> uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Bobble hats, hats right? Can we talk about bobble hats after uh, this? Um, <laughs> definitely. We're we'll hanging about after this podcast. See, when you're running, I know it sounds jovial, but see, when you're running a business, right, it's like, I don't want to be talking about hats here. I'm busy, yeah, yeah, as yeah, you said. Yeah, I just yeah. want, to send me the fucking hats. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that's what you do, just make it simple for your yeah. customers. Like, mm. you know your customers, first of all, know what they want. We've got a system, and we've got thousands of customers, but we've got, it's on our system, we've got this sort of history system where you type in polo shirt you know exactly what polo shirt they get it's all there and if you're really that first send them a quick confirmation they'll check it yeah it's good mm-hmm. to go but make customers life simple it's yeah. absolutely fundamental business to you get in a shop you don't want to stand debate but when you're a checkout guy oh can I have this bottle of beer or this lettuce now just make mm-hmm. it simple that's, mm-hmm. that's the key yeah I mean that that example for us couldn't agree more about simplicity but I think of eight, eight emails back and forth and I see if they just said after the first email we don't have it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said it. That came, uh, probably jumping a wee bit onto the, the new company when we set yeah. up. But I, I remember driving to work during Lord COVID. I was still doing a wee bit then. And um, I'm listening to the radio. And I don't listen to the radio now because I'm sick of all the negativity you know, the, the fear factor and everything mm-hmm. else they put down. But I used to listen to the radio and they say, um, Debenhams Institution, Fraser's Institution, mm-hmm. been about for centuries and they're struggling to do it with online presence. Mm-hmm. So I'm driving to work going, I've got a website but it's not really particularly good. And, I'm going, well, it doesn't matter because I've got a really successful business. And I'm thinking to myself, well, once upon a time, Fraser's thought that. Once upon a time, Debrum's thought that. that. So I thought, I'd put my finger out here. So I have basic a website and spent a bit of money on it and subsequently just recently done the same again. So if you phone me up back to the hats, I'm looking for hats. Well, there's a link to all the hats. What one do you like? Mm-hmm. I'd recommend this one. No way, if I send you a link with 300 hats on it, you're going to go, Pff, information overload. This is our most popular hat. I wear it myself. I've got the same haircut as you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to you like don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so then you would just go, okay, go with that hat, Paul. And that, that's it. No, or I would say, I'd recommend this hat, and here's a link to all the hats in case you didn't like that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's effectively what we've done. So that's, that's makes so sense. So, uh, just coming back to your story then, what, what took you from being 25% owner of that business to now your, your current setup? I saw, we took it quite far, the company, and it was doing really, really well. And uh, <coughs> the guy, Danny, was 57, I was 35 at this point. And um, he was obviously seeing the way out. He wanted out. He was. Mm-hmm. I couldn't afford to buy him out. I was on a good life. We loved travelling. We lived off kids, so we were living the life. We were spending as much as we were earning travelling over the world, living you know, high life, whatever else. So mm-hmm. maybe never saved as well as I should have, sort of thing. So anyway, he was trying to sell the company and found my feet as well. I might add. So that 
left a wee bad taste. Yeah. And back to what I was saying a way back about people, you know, I'm one of the guys, I'm like 100% most loyal guy in the world. I would run over burning coals for you, but the minute you shit mm -hmm. me, I'm sort of done sort of thing. So the relationship was a bit tarnished by that point. My wife, Caroline, was getting a right hard time in there because nobody could really get to me, but they could get to me through her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, I went like going about it too much and poor me, but she got a hard time and she was a really intelligent person, done really well for that company and it, it did rankle me a wee bit. So a lot of things happened, which I'm no guinea, because it's all just he says, she says. And Did they not even sit you down and say, look, I'm kind of, I've got one foot at the door here, I'm trying to sell, I can either do that with your support or... No, just trying never, to do it I just tried to do it, and it was three times, to be honest, and people, I've got a good reputation in the industry, so people are phoning me, telling me. Oh, God, so this point, uh, that's like, not a great position to be in, I. So I called at my meeting, and um, I missed a big key part of my, my business, because a woman called Mary used to work with us, um, she was, her son died in South Africa, so I was sort of surrogate son, and she really mentored me all the way through my career. And so she was now working for me at Scotland, so I took her everywhere I went, sort of thing. And she'd always say to me, Paul, what are you doing? You should be working for yourself. These idiots can lose your boots, not. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't see that yourself. Somebody else tells you that, you think, oh, she just says that because she likes me, sort of thing. So she kept saying to me, you need to set up yourself. And she was a driving force. If, without her having to set up myself, because I, I was going seven, eight holidays a year, living the life. I didn't need to mm -hmm. work for myself. I knew I'd give all that up if I worked for myself, because mm -hmm. again, back to. People say, oh, what for yourself? Oh, you'll make loads of money. Well, if you're in business to make money, well, it's going to take a long time to make a lot of money. If you're in business mm -hmm. to get a better life and work less hours, well, that ain't happening either. Yeah. If you want to be a successful business, <laughs> yeah. I hear all the time, oh, I'm going to, I wish I had set up like you, Paul. I mean, I, I work too many hours. I'm going, too many hours I work. And that nine years down the road. Um, but anyway, so Mary kept saying, you need, you need to set up yourself. And it, now, this was all happening. This, these were the thoughts that went through my head. I'm going, right. So I called him at a meeting and we used to meet in the Hilton all the time. This was our showdown at the Hilton. And I said, listen, I know what you've done. The trust is gone. I said, so the only way this is going to work is we build it up to sell it. I want 50% of the business. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, this is because at the moment if I leave, you don't have a business. You know that. And, I know that. and probably from his point of view, and somebody said that to me these days, I'm like, oh, the hell, you are. But the reality was it was the truth, and, and so mm -hmm. it proved. So he says, right, okay, well, I said, I'm not putting up any money. I want 50% of the business for nothing. Because what I've done is taken it from 300 grand to 2.1 million, and that's pretty much with me and my mm -hmm. people, my wife, and everything else. So he was a bit like, Pff. I'll drink your but through time he probably thought about it and he said right let's do it so we went to meet the accountant I'll never forget stay as long as I live Mary had bought me a, a pen probably any Parker pens or not <laughs> 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 anyway, at this point I didn't have any so I got my Parker pen so we went to, it was West Regent Street on Glasgow big fancy offices I'm buzzing got a wee Parker pen in my pocket and get my 50% share of the business here we're going up so the accountant comes in I'm sitting there now we've got fancy crockery and the fancy pay, uh, what do you call it kettle and all that sort of stuff us. So I'm buzzing, he says, um, I know I forget, I could verbatim what he said to me. This wee annoying voice. Right, Paul, um, <laughs> just to let you know, um, no one in the history has ever got 50% of a business for nothing. I'm going, all right, okay. So Danny's sitting there with his head down. And I said, um, but he said he's given me 50% of the business for nothing. So mm -hmm. irrespective of what anyone's ever done in history, I don't care about it. We've agreed this in principle. He said, well, it's not happening. Um, so what we're going to do is give you 45% of the business for 50,000 quid. And I says, but I don't have 50,000 quid. He's like, well, that's your problem. He says, because let me give you a wee lesson in business, right? So by this oh point, I'm not. Right? Oh <laughs> he says, we've got partners in here. If you want to be a partner in here, you need to put down 100 grand. I says, I don't care about your business. Your business is completely irrelevant to me. Your agreement is this. So he says, well, it's not happening. So by this point, I'm like, now, a few profanities, a few uh, things getting thrown about. Now, off of I would have fucking threw the accountant through a window. I think they'd pack up So we are went, and by this point, I'm done. Right? I'm like, this is, uh, uh, but I had nowhere to go. And mm -hmm. I wasn't going to work for anyone else. I wasn't giving away any equity in the business. So I knew I was setting up myself. So I said to my wife, right, he'd done, let's just get saving. So we saved up that whole year, basically. We had about six, no, 20 grand actually saved up. And I said, right, come the new year, we'll make moves, sort of thing. And, um, I said to her, let's go to Canada, we're going to Canada, let's go to Canada, one last big holiday, buy all the clothes you need for the next two years, because all we're going to do is work for the next mm -hmm. two years. So we went to Canada, had a great holiday, blah, 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 came back, and um, I said to him, look, listen, it's not working, I need to go. So I'm, not going, I'm not going anywhere, I've not done anything, I don't even know where I'm going, obviously I knew I was sent myself, um, but I'll, I'll be away by March. So that gives you three months to make your moves and do what you need to do. I said, but I'll not be here. And then he's like, okay, whatever. So the relations got a bit strained. As you can imagine, it wasn't particularly good. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, he was working for me, so I knew he was retiring in February. So he retired. He'd done a wee bit of disservice to my wife, Dr. Wages, which again, I'm not getting it. It's all just he says, she says. So I said, right, this is our moment. You hand your notice in. So she, she hands her notice in. And he, he's absolutely, what the hell's going on now? So he says, Caroline's leaving us, is I? She's leaving, hi. 
what did, what did, what did, didn't know what to say mm-hmm. I says I'm going next and he's like oh, can we, we need to sort this out you're going to buy the company off me and whatever else I said, I can't afford to buy the company off you Let, let's sit down you had your chance it's uh-huh. almost in it it's yeah. like you could have sorted it amicably Sorry, again, I'm, I'm, bit... I'm invested now but again no miss calling him because he was a good guy and he, we worked well with a good relationship this is the way it ends and it partnerships generally don't work in business because mm. people are going in different directions so he was a good guy but we got on well I'm no bad mouth in the guy whatsoever it, just, it was just time to go and um, he's like right okay so we had numerous meetings and I can't wait a month's notice to work and whatever else so I'm sitting going well this gives a month to get affairs in order and what we're going to do sort of thing so she starts exploring setting up the business getting things moving and everything else um, then he said to me well, if you buy the business so I was like I think he went to 300 grand off me which would have been a steal in fairness um, but you need to make all these guys redundant who I didn't want i.e. him and the brother and the wife and that was 130 grand and I want a, a, I think it's a five year lease in a unit at 30 grand a year and I'm going that's a 600 grand package for a business mm-hmm. that I can set up myself with my 16 grand yeah. albeit it was going to take me a lot longer oh, to get to where I was but, mm-hmm. but I wasn't going to have to pay debt for the next X amount of years mm-hmm. excuse me um, so I said no listen it's just time to go let's just shake hands and be gentlemen about it sort of thing and and off I went, aye. And well, I literally, I think I was due to finish. I can't remember the date. Well, I ran a nine year anniversary, was the 23rd, which was the weekend. Is that nine years? Nine years, aye. Do you saw? Felt we'd it started. So, anyway, decided we're setting up ourselves. Um, we'd got a wee unit in the Airdrie, which we're still in. We, we spoke mm-hmm. about it earlier, we've got big plans this year. Um, and we, I finished up on the Friday, my wife wrote me, I said, That's me finished, I'm out. And she's like, Do you mean you've got another three weeks' notice? Mm. I don't know, and she's right, well, I've got the keys to the unit. And I remember literally driving for my last day, a wee bit emotional, whatever else, and mm-hmm. having left, drove straight to uh, North Lancashire Council, got the keys for the unit, drove up, walked in, and the place was an absolute shithole. And I'm thinking, I went from being a director of a company, I'm in serious money, right. and it's Saturday morning, sweeping floors, cleaning toilets, I'm going, what the hell have I done? <laughs> <laughs> and that was us. On we went, and literally, we just, we've just we never looked back. It was the best decision I've ever made, the hardest decision I've ever made. Aye. It's still hard. It's still hard every day of the week, but... I wouldn't have it any other way. It's yeah. just been yeah, I graft. And what was what was Sorry, that? What was the so obviously you mentioned straight into sweeping floors for your directorship and was it just you and your wife that yeah. started? So at the time I had a, an Audi A seven, right? Big fancy car, not oh, life was amazing, whatever else. And I says, right, we need to get a van. So we've only got sixteen grand, that's our mm-hmm. operating costs and everything we need to get going. So we traded out then and got a van. I think I made six grand out of it or something. I had a 50 grand motor, walked out with a 17 grand van, made six grand out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But again, they knew that, obviously. So just the two years, and I said, right, what we'll do, I'll go out all day, do the sales, do the deliveries, you take in all the deliveries. We'll just dodge it. We'll do 400 grand a year. We make a good living out of that. We'll be, we'll be okay. She's like, oh, sure, we could do that. I was like, aye, aye, no bother. Piece of piss now. Whatever else. Day one, I'm out delivering. Order, order, order. Everybody wanted to give me orders. I think we took over like, over 300 customers in the first couple of months and I'm going this is going to be an absolute is that just existing relationships existing, yeah, basically yeah. all yeah, the guys yeah. I dealt with for all these years just they want to support you because see if you're yeah, a good yeah. guy back to what I was saying earlier on see if you just treat people right people see you as a nice guy and it, and it's probably hard for me doing this because I don't really see myself as this big businessman earning mm. loads of money that's all it's a byproduct of success as I said earlier on if you're in business to make money you're doing the wrong thing you'll make money mm-hmm. as long as you do the right thing and that, it's taken us a wee bit longer to maybe do that but we've done it the right way sort of thing so yeah, I'm out doing my deliveries and see my customers and I come back at night and Caroline says to me, right, you've got uh, 23 deliveries tomorrow and I'm going, I've got eight customers to see, I've got appointments, mm-hmm. need to cancel them all. Mm-hmm. So I think we're about six weeks in it, she's ready for divorce me, I'm mm-hmm. stressed at my job. <laughs> she's like, we need to take a driver on. So right, okay, so we get a driver, took, poached one of the guys for the other place, took him on. Um, Did your Dano end up back with you? No, he wouldn't come. He wouldn't come. He's sitting who's retired. Like, and I might add that to buy his house off and allow him to retire. Me. I'm paying a mortgage. I'm not got a pot to piss in. I'm paying this bloody mortgage. He's like, oh, I'm not helping you. I'm retired. I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've not got a car because I've obviously, my car was my van. So I'm uh, going, in fear, my dad gave me a bit of dough and I went and bought a car. And, uh, my young sister, she, she's always in good cars. I've always had good cars. And we're up to, I think it's Perth or something like this. We, um, Cleo, we, you know, mm-hmm. Very it, Cleo, it, it was, it was nice wee motor. I remember driving down. She going, "This is a fantastic car." And I'm like, "Shut up, Mister." <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there trying to bump me up as a Cleo. <laughs> but again, I've got a wee thing, and now you clean your mileage and stuff like that. Right. And I've still got it, my phone. I yeah, still got it, my my desktop, and it's expenses for the Cleo. And I look at mm-hmm. it, and it always reminds me. Don't, don't forget what you came for. Now. Mm-hmm. You can already have a nice car and this crap, but you're only a bad week away for mm-hmm. get back to me. And that motivates me as well. And um, so anyway, we took him on, and then we took another couple of guys on, and. What I should have said the first month, I think the projected sales are 15 grand in the first month. So we're like, that's okay, aye. First month sales, 55,000 quid. 
I'm going, bloody, so we ran out of money within three days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no money. Right. As in, literally, I, I'm sitting uh, going, the 16 grand was gone. Mm-hmm. Suppliers are saying, we'll give you a five grand credit limit. We're up to 50 grand. Mm-hmm. Well, you need to pay some of this money. I'm like, I've got any money. Uh, People are not paying me for another 30 days. And mm-hmm. So we literally were over trading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've got people then come to me, smelling weakness, aren't they? Counting, I'll give you 100 grand for 50% of your business. Mm-hmm. Palamine, I'll give you 50 grand, 100 grand again, 50% of your business. Then I'm going, I'm not giving away any equity in my business. I, I, I've been there before, I don't want to be in that position I was with the other guy. So we just had to grind and grind and grind, duck, dive. I mean, we used to work all day, go home, you know, like my training, do a bit of training, then we'd sit with the laptops. So we'd have dinner, sit with the laptops, <coughs> excuse me, opposite ends of the table till at midnight, up the next day, repeat, 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 repeat. And I think next month we'd done 45 grand with a 10 grand projection. So we'd, I think if we were 25 grand, we'd done 110 grand the first few months. And we were all over the place, so we were just struggling. And, and these yeah, are good yeah. memories because it was a lot of friends helped us, mm-hmm. family come up, helped us. And it was just good times, tough times. Just, uh, mm. we, times. we refer to that, don't we? Like embracing the chaos sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Where, where yeah. it's like you think, oh my God, we really shouldn't be doing this. But then you kind of knuckle down and you somehow manage to pull it off. Yeah. But uh, yeah. That, that sounds like it was serious chaos, oh, to be fair. Hard times like that. And again, you, then you develop, the business gets bigger and away you go. And it, yeah. You forget about all this stuff now as you, you go through it all. But, and then COVID hit, obviously, that was sort of I, tough I, times. I, I want to dig into that got a, few a wee bit. Good times and tough times, I, I suppose. I, 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 we were chatting before the podcast and I was honest with you and said the term PP to me meant nothing until COVID. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure that probably rings true for a lot of people that have maybe been involved in a job that requires them to wear workwear. But talk to us a bit about that period. Was it good for business? Was it shit for business? Well, initially, obviously, we all had to shut, didn't we? That was the mm-hmm. big thing. You to, you closed, doesn't matter what, didn't, sorry, didn't matter what you were. So every business was closed. Apart from one of our big customers was um, Grant's Whiskey. They were producing hand sanitizer and... I think so. Scotland done all I'll keep saying. Do you know what? That was like, it's food and drink. It's food and drink. We need to stay home, right? People need their whiskey. So I was basically, mm. right, we're shutting down, we're in the house. So day one, you're like, right, what are we doing? I've never known what to do in my life. And mm-hmm. even in holiday, I literally go on holiday, straight back to work. I don't have any downtime or anything like that. What could I do? Probably don't know if we went to touch or no, but I went to Everest, as you know, Everest Space mm-hmm. Camp. And mm-hmm. So I had a wee journal and I went to write a book. Yeah. So I wrote my book about Everest Space Camp. That was two weeks. So I'm like, right, that's the first two weeks done. Happy days. What could I do now? Mm-hmm. And, um, how was ever a space camp? It was good. Yeah, it was good. Can't, yeah, I was going to say, you can't just like drop it. <laughs> I, just can't, I, just can't. I, went, I went to Everest and wrote a book, but what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I should probably, that one's for Mr. Mallard, the teacher. Uh, yeah. uh, you, you never amount to it, but I wrote a book that sold thousands of copies on Amazon. So cheers. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the, the motivation for that. No, it was good. I, I like mountains and stuff like that. So back then it was all hiking and stuff. I've done all the Monroes, you know, the mm-hmm. yeah. 282 Monroes. And, then I like running, I do ultra marathons, run up down mountains and all that sort of stuff. So I'm into all that sort of stuff, which is good. It keeps you motivated, keeps you fit as well for business. Now that's mm-hmm. a big part. I mean, I got up this morning, done my 15 minutes in the gym, hard session. I go home the night and do double sessions every day and just keep yourself fit, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I, your hosts so all have to take the same care. But like yourself, I can see you as a way of you. When you. <laughs> what are you, Jim Boys? I can see it. I can never Wait, see it. And what's the name of your book? Uh, one Step at a Time. My journey to Everest Base Camp. Nice. Right, okay. So, uh, and I would encourage you to buy it, and it, not as a plug. Every single penny of profit gets sent to Strathcairn Hospice. Every single penny. All right. So I've not made you. a single penny out of it. Uh, every single. That's amazing. Profit. In fairness, my dad said it was a good read. Did I? Oh God. God. He's Christmas you know what, I, 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 don't want to talk, I know. We'll talk about this. Obviously, it was a business podcast, but uh, uh, I've always wanted to write a book. That was uh, always my thing. So, I decided I was going to go years and years ago. Me and my wife were out hiking. She didn't want it, but. We were up, I think it was Ben Ann, and we met these, what was it, Connick Hill, we met these two girls, and uh, we were chatting about them, and they're saying, uh, oh, we're going to Everest Space Camp, and I'm going, oh, I'd love to go to Everest Space Camp, and so we get chatting about them, and we default we bumped into them the next week at uh, Ben Ann, I think it was about mm-hmm. one or two, whatever it was, so that was where the, the dream was hatched sort of thing, and it took me a long time to get there, it was years and years later, and but anyway, we booked, it was 2019, I think we went, um, great time, amazing experience, like you put... 10 people together for every walk of life there was a, a billionaire's daughter she was we called her precious because she was like, <laughs> putting my gloves doing this yeah, 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 that's yeah. the other sort of mindset and she was Indian and there was a guy very posh I'm still friend on Derek he was like high class lawyer and American not like and just but then there was people normal folk like me normal mm-hmm. folk like you know, my mates one of my mates was there just guys from England guys yeah. from Australia still friend they all come over last year and we done in uh, West Highland Way with a sort of reunion and cut up again so oh, you still stay in contact yeah, yeah. Ah, is, that, that, know that. is that environment like, I could imagine obviously I've never been anywhere near an Everest never mind a mountain I've, I've <laughs> been up Connick Hill mind you but is that environment like a leveller in regards to people and their personalities 100% because at the start we've all got to hang up with something I'm still cool and I'm still this but then 
<laughs> with no wash for nine days. Uh, the funny we used to have a, a subject every day. You couldn't go to the toilet, right? As in, sit down to it because mm-hmm. it was basically no protein in your diet. You were basically just eating carbs, 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 carbs. So the conversation every day is. You been for a shit yet? <laughs> you been for a shit? I told you about your daughter. Uh, no, I've not been. Have you been? In? So it is a level. That's your question. Hundred uh, percent. Because yeah. it didn't matter what you had out there. Because we were on the same boat. You all had to hike for about fourteen days. You could have been the richest guy in the world. You, Aye. So it was a great, great experience. One of the great experiences of my life, and done that. It was hard as well. Very, very hard. Altitude and everything else, but. No, it was good times, eh? Really, good really time. good times. Well, listen, as always, co- conscious of time, I could genuinely talk to you all day, but I want to make sure that we leave time for you to do a bit of a plug. So talk to us a bit about current performance of your business and what does the next three to five years hold for you? But we're doing well. I mean, it's back to us saying about COVID, and the COVID was good for us because we had products, we had everything else, but we never ripped anybody off. That was the absolute key to our business. Some of our suppliers did rip us off, blatantly ripped us off. Mm-hmm. We said to everyone, look, situation's this. A box of masks just now is 50 quid. We're paying 40 for it. Mm-hmm. They should be two quid, but we can't help the situation we're in. But if we treat you all fairly, we give you a good price, make sure you look after us at the end of this. That's the absolute key, because we're not j- jump through hoops and everything sorted. We want your business at the end of this. So we've done that. We looked after everyone. Since then, we've just grown strength to strength. Loads of new business, big contracts. People that we helped out during COVID rewarded us with big contracts. We're just doing what we've always done. We do different things. We get into big companies and say, we'll measure your staff up. We'll measure your feet with specialist machines and stuff like that. So... That's we added things, prescription eyewear, all that sort of stuff. So we've done ah, that. Right, okay. And that gives us a wee bit of added value. We don't really charge anymore, it's just in the price. But we're not the cheapest, but you're getting added value, and that's what we offer. Um, but in answer to your question, we've we bought new premises for the business, so we're going to massively upscale what we're doing. But we've been sort of restricted where we are, don't have a lot of space, make and do. We make and do for about seven years now. But mm-hmm. So we've bought new premises, that will be finalised hopefully next Friday. And then the world's a oyster, we can just go as Good. high, far. There's no real plan because mm-hmm. we don't need a plan. We just need to go, right, let's get in the premises. And we've got the scope to do whatever we want. I mean, we're going to be like four or five times the size of what we've got just now, so good. it's going to be good times ahead. It's exciting times. Many Brilliant. folk have you got in your business? Twelve. Just now. Sorry, ten yeah. at the moment. So. We're looking for someone, and we'll go up to twelve time we get to the new place. And we might even push it up a bit higher. We could do with more. We could Aye. definitely do with more. So it's exciting times. And how how do you find just ma- managing the team? I don't right. My wife does it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know too busy climbing mountains. I'm too busy climbing mountains. <laughs> I wish I had. No, mm. she does all that. So, I mean, it started with both years, and then she's got a better. She's a good trainer. She's got a good manner. I'm a bit more sales, and again, if I'm dealing with that, I can't be dealing with sales. So mm-hmm. I'm sales that side. It solely sales. I'm persona non grata in my wee office, so they're just rattling away my emails and sending out links to the website and stuff like that. She does all the guys, so she's fantastic. She does all them and looks after them. We've got a great team now, and we're taking them out to Aaron next month. We've got a we had a magical figure this, this year, so I'll take them away for a jolly and massages and beer tours and all that sort of stuff. Good. So reward them. But again, back to what I said, look after your people, your people, your Aye. business. Without your people, you don't have a business. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. And you know what? I love that tip that you've gave there around like COVID times. It would have been dead easy, I would imagine, to go at the cost of the cost, pull everybody's pants down. Yeah. But you've been pretty clever about it by the sounds of things. Long game. Do you yeah. know that way? It's like still margin there to be made, but we'll look after you and stick by us. Definitely. And you know, I never touched this final. I know you're right to finish up, but June Code, one of my customers phoned me and he said, um, at the time I'm feeling sorry for myself. Oh, but we can't go out, we can't work, we can't do anything. And I was running by his house and he said to phone me and I said, I'm just running by your house for enough one of these ones. And he said, um, why are you not working? You're a PPE company. I says, well, we're a workwear company that does PPE. He says, the same thing. He said, I'm going to give you a wee lesson in business here and it's brutal. And I'm like, okay. He says, my dad had a plant hire company when Lockerbie happened. And I was like, okay, where's this going? He says, and he phoned every member of his staff and says, get every bit of plant we've got down to Lockerbie during the night. Because we were going to be busy for a year. He says, mm-hmm. but he lived in a caravan, he lived in B&Bs, he sold his business a year later for two million quid. Mm-hmm. He's like, this is your locker bay. And I was quite offended by this. I was like, oh, yeah. I can't believe you said that. That's, that's brutal. Mm-hmm. And you know, a couple of days I thought, do you know what? He's right. That's right this yeah. is my moment. I'm a PPE mm-hmm. company. I've got 20 odd years of experience and I'm sitting in the house feeling sorry for myself. Aye. How I can't work. So that's when we kicked in and away we went for the air. We looked after everyone. And as I say, we never ripped him off. That was the, the key the thing key, Good mate, well listen, uh, amazing talking to you, congratulations on the success of your, I guess, couple of businesses thus far, sounds like the future's bright, but it's been great to talk to you, um, we'll wrap up there, cheers every day for listening in, as always, catch us again next week with our next guest, give us a like on all the socials and all of that fun stuff, and check Paul and his business out, we'll be sure to link your business and all the posts that we do, so thank you mate. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.